ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Think Global Podcast. I am your host, International Seth, and we have a new guest coming on the show with me today, all the way from Canada. Ms. Zainab Kahira, how are you doing? I am I am good. I'm good. How are you? I'm okay. I'm going to have to apologize from the beginning. I'm a little bit under the weather here. Uh, you know, oh, okay. in Doha, we're transitioning from the fall to the winter, and it's like, I'm driving in the car. I don't know if I should roll the windows down or to yeah. have the AC on. So it's kind of like I'm catching a cold, but I got yeah. my little trusty tea, tea <laughs> ginger tea, and uh, I'm just going to be trying to well. take a little bit of sips here and there. Okay, no problem. And I also know with the time difference, it's kind of late there. So I'm sure you're getting close to your to your your sleep time. I just put the baby <laughs> to sleep about an hour ago. So it's all good. <laughs> Zainab. Miss Layla. Know, yeah, Miss Layla. <laughs> you know, I'm, we're coming out to um, to Canada um, in inshallah in the beginning of summer. And uh, of next year. Yes. 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 Nova and Scotia. Or Halifax. Right. Halifax. Halifax is in Halifax, Nova, Scotia. Nova Scotia. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'm just going to put it out there right now. When I touch down, I need a J-O-B. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you tell everybody about your newfound, um, your, your newfound business, uh, Zika Harris, specialist uh, providing c- career um, consulting for people, because I'm going to need a job sure. when I get there. Sure. <laughs> so uh, my business actually has been an accumulation of, I don't know, almost 20 years of me working uh, in a, a public sector and then also just me combining my education, my formal education. I have a bachelor's in business uh, management and I have a master's in education, uh, counseling education and college student affairs. So when I moved, uh, we'll talk, we'll get into more about why I moved to Canada. But when I moved to Canada, I moved to a province that's bilingual Mm -hmm. and it's heavily French, even though it's bilingual. So I really struggled to find work because they wanted you to be able to speak both. On top of that, I was still working through my like paperwork with uh, permanent residency and and, and the like. So I was just like, I can't sit around. I just, um, I have two parents who are just, were, my mom was a go-getter. She was always doing something. And my father is like, you know, he's he is a, an aficionado at a lot of things. So needless to say, I was like, I, I, I have my skills. I have my knowledge. What can I do with it? And uh, what really made me decide to start the business was because I discovered that I really am, get a sense of fulfillment from helping other people succeed. Um, it's like there's a light. I can see a light in everybody. And even when it's dimmed, I feel like I have the ability to like ignite that light in them, right? So, and because so much of our lives are spent um, at our jobs, I just felt like it's not a radical idea to be able to do something that aligns with you authentically, you know, that is uh, a true representation of who you are you know, mentally, emotionally, even physically, you know, what, what's best for you. And so my mission is really to help specifically uh, millennials like you and me and Gen Zers, you know, navigate just their career journey and, you know, give them the tools that they need to um, be successful. So I started off with uh, the name Cade. I did that a couple of years ago. And then I was like, I want my name on this. I do all the work. So (laughs) I switched it uh, this past summer uh, to my first and my last name, which is Zainab Kahir, a career specialist on Instagram. It's ZK Career, Z-K-C-A-R-E-E-R-S. Facebook is facebook.com slash ZK Careers. And then also on LinkedIn, my first and last name, Zainab Kahir, you can connect with me there. And it's been great. I mean, Allah is merciful because I... I got laid off from a job that I really wasn't in love with anyway. I, I knew that it was a means to an end. And now I'm able to, you know, alhamdulillah, with the support of my husband, really just focus on doing work that's more meaningful. So. That's fantastic. And it's, it's very well timing, too, with everything that's going on. And I can yes. obviously see the transformation between 
you know, this whole digital age and things going online and, you know, a lot of people being off work, there might, you know, really be um, flocking towards, you know, somebody who is a specialist and try to really help right. people sort themselves out. But I like how you said that everybody has a light and it's really about pulling e each other out. Um, that's right that's so right. best of luck with all that and uh definitely definitely uh luck. everybody go to uh zainab social media account that she just said and uh hopefully that you can um start putting some people back to work because it's well needed yes inshallah and my, just one more plug my website is my first and my last name.com so zainab kahara z-e-i-n-a-b-k-a-h-e-r-a.com so excellent go check her out you guys go check her out <laughs> All right. Well, we come to the point in the in the in interview really quick uh, where we do with everybody. OK. And this is a segment we called World Call. OK. And this is when we give our guests 10 seconds to name off um, as many uh, international countries that they visited. OK. Um, for some mm -hmm. of us, we have long list of Ba, 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 ba. And obviously we can't get it through in 10 seconds, but for other people who are maybe not that well traveled before, you know, they'll be able to say off a couple of countries. All right. So sure. we want to put Zainab on the world call. <laughs> starting. Well, I'll, I'll, I'm about to be done Ready? in five seconds. Go. Okay. So uh, Egypt, uh, Saudi Arabia is a baby. That's where our families connect to Saudi Arabia. UK as a baby, so I don't remember that Nan thing, and now Canada. Canada, okay, so that's four. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, so I need to show I need to show Asia some love. I definitely need to show the motherland, sister, Europe the motherland, some love. the motherland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where it's at. Yeah. That's where it's at. That's where it's at. Inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. So you said that you're in Canada. What part of Canada are you? In? So I'm in Quebec. So that's on the east. It's not the East Coast, but it's on the east side of Canada. Mm -hmm. We're like right above New York State and okay. uh, part of Vermont as well. Nice. And when did yeah. when and did, I'm in uh, Montreal. Montreal. Okay. When Montreal, when did you move yeah. there? And you yeah. When did you move there? So I moved there. It'll be six years in January. My husband's from here, and we met uh, via the internet. And uh, we just, we were both like in transition, just finishing up academic programs. So we were like, whoever gets the better job first, that's mm -hmm. who'll move. So I used to say he got lucky, but I got lucky too, because Canada is, is, is pretty cool. So uh, I moved here, like literally we got married and then the next day I was on the plane and wow. it was a blizzard when I wow. left. Well, we're gonna get into all <laughs> that, but obviously uh, you grew up in the States and, um, so how is it like, well, we can't really say technically living overseas because it's just yeah. north of the border. So how is it living in a different country like Canada? What are some differences that makes Canada different than the U.S.? Yeah, well, it's definitely smaller because um, like, for instance, there's more people in the state of Texas, in the state of California, and I think the state of Florida individually than there is in Canada. Mm -hmm. So but Canada is literally the size of the U.S. I mean, there's a big, a major part of it that's like un uninhabitable, I think is the word I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. But it's it's um, very, very, very- Basically cold as, cold as hell. <laughs> cold, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like being in Alaska, yeah. I guess. So, yeah. um, so it's really small, but there's, a, I mean, a lot of the cultural norms here are similar to the U.S. in terms of like, when I came here, I didn't feel like I couldn't, um, navigate uh you know my way around even mm -hmm. though there's somewhat of a language barrier specifically in quebec mm -hmm. i felt like i was just like in another u.s state yeah. for the most part yeah. there are some distinct differences uh culturally uh, but um it's if you're trying to make a transition to a new country and you want to take baby steps canada is definitely a place to go okay now when i yeah. think of canada i think of a couple of things Number one, I think of ice hockey. Number two, <laughs> I think of maple syrup. Yes. <laughs> Number three, I think of um, precious metals, especially like silver, because I know they have a lot of mining companies in Canada. Mm, and number okay. four, this is whenever I'm overseas, I always see Canadians have like the Canadian flag on their backpacks or, <laughs> or the hat or something. It's always like a little flag or like a, a pin or something that lets them know that they're from Canada. 
So what are some yeah. strange like customs that, that you have been getting used to uh, or something that we might find strange or funny being Americans in Canada? Um, I don't know. I think that the, I, I agree with you. People do take a lot of pride in their being Canadian as they should. I mean, it's, it's a really beautiful place. You know, the people are very, very nice in general. Um, I haven't encountered anything too weird. I mean, I thought poutine was kind of weird, but you know, when you live over across the water, you know, um, in a different continent, you're exposed to so many different foods, things don't phase you that much. So I was like, oh, it's gravy and, and French fries and cheese. You know? Okay, so say it again, because <laughs> I have no idea what you just said and what what is it? You have to explain to that. Pl poutine? So poutine, poutine. P-O-U-T-I-N-E. So poutine is French fries and then they put cheese curds and they put gravy on top of it. It's actually not that bad. I mean, there's so many different ways that you can get it, but it's like going anywhere you go that that's like a fast food place or anything like that, they will always have poutine, you know, but you there are like restaurants that have like, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Not high class, but... Um, Oh, sorry. Somebody's Amir is calling me. Hold on one second. No worries. Hang up. Sorry. No worries. <laughs> I apologize for that. No worries. Um, uh, yeah, you can go to any like an upscale restaurant. They okay. could have poutine there as well. So I think that's that's the main thing. But uh, for me, honestly, like just being in Quebec, um, this isn't as as fun. But Quebec is they really try to hold on to their French uh, mm -hmm. Canadian tradition. And so there is like a bit of a struggle there in terms of adapting to the cultural norms because they don't, because it's so heavily influenced. It's almost like uh, they kind of look down upon you and if you don't embrace it openly, you know? So that, that has been like a bit of a, a nuisance for me in terms of just my social interactions, but there isn't uh, yeah, you'll hear people say A, uh, I still yeah. haven't figured out what's the rest time to say, hey, I yeah. said it to my husband and he's like, that's not right. That's not the right time. <laughs> you got to get your timing down, eh? I got your time right. <laughs> so, I mean, growing up in Seattle, we used to cross the border and go to Vancouver all the time. And uh, obviously yeah. I have family in Toronto, Ontario. So I've been to Toronto um, pl plenty of times as well. I myself, I actually have Canadian citizenship. I don't know if you know that, but I do. Yeah, but, I know. Yeah, yeah. Do all so, of you do? Um, I know Adam, no, Adam, my brother Adam does, and um, myself, I have, um, my other sisters, um, they haven't got it, I don't know why, but hopefully they'll- Oh, I thought Sarah had then. Uh, okay. I, know, I know they're entitled to it, but, um, you know, so like being in Canada, and um, I see how things are different as far as like the the foundations of it. I know healthcare is a big, um, big, big benefit yeah. of living in Canada. I know crime, um, if you could- put any major um, a metropolitan city in, in America, say for instance, in New York, your LA, Chicago, Baltimore, et cetera, et cetera. Although there is crime in major cities like Toronto, maybe to less than extent, um, well, you would know better than I would, but I know Toronto has a lot of gangs and stuff like that and a little drug yeah, trade. Yeah, yeah. But nowhere near the, the amount that is back to, to the US. So uh, can, oh, you, can, yeah. can you can you speak a little bit about that? Crime. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm sorry. I apologize for interrupting. Yeah, especially in terms of violent crime. I, I mean, I haven't really researched it that much, but I um, there the gun laws here are different. So like you can have a gun, but it has to be for hunting purposes. But it's not like how it is in the United States, where you have like in Georgia. Georgia is an open carry state, mm -hmm. you know. So. Um, so that is definitely a distinct difference. And with the healthcare, yeah, I mean, when you have under what 30 million people living in the country, it's um, it does kind of help in terms of spreading the wealth. But there are some downfalls to that because um, it takes a while sometimes to see a doctor. Mm. I remember um, I had surgery. I ended up doing it in the U.S., but I had I had to have surgery, and I had to wait three months for just to see the doctor for a consultation. Wow. It's crazy. Months. Yes. Yeah. So that actually kind of brings me a bit of anxiety sometimes is when I have to go to the doctor or the hospital because I just really don't know. And in, in like Montreal, some of the hospitals are a bit older. So mm. it's just not, 
I don't know. It's that that's and, and Quebec is a city is a province that is understaffed and when it comes to med uh, doctors. Mm. So you're also dealing with that hurdle as well. So and I think also like just the taxes, like free ain't free. Like I have <laughs> yeah. to tell people that, especially when they think about the healthcare parts, like, no, we paying for that. Yeah. We definitely do. When you go to the store and you gotta pay 15% sales tax okay. on most goods. I mean, there's exceptions like groceries and and um even books, you'll pay less than five percent. And I do some I think groceries is less than three percent in taxes. Okay. But if I want to buy a material good, you're going to have to go ahead and put that 15% on that sucker. Wow. And, uh, you know, any type of your salary and things. Yeah. How much is, how much is income? How come, how much is income tax? Uh, I want to say it's about 30, 30, between so 25 you... and 30. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And that depends on your income level. Mm -hmm. So, um, my my husband and I, it was less when he was making under uh, 50 and then our income doubled because I started working and then they were like, we're going to get our money today. Yeah, yeah. So it's a <laughs> so, sliding scale. Uh, the more you make, the more yeah. you get taxes. Huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To my knowledge, I'm not the most learned on it. I just know that I always prepare myself to have... And people are conditioned to it. I mean, they obviously... They don't like, it's like in the US, there's debates about how much money we should be paying in taxes, but because there is an entire healthcare system that is tied to uh, uh, the payment of taxes, um, people are, they're not afraid to share the wealth, right? There's you know, like in the US, it's this conversation about uh, how much the government should be involved and mm -hmm. you know, you're considered a socialist if you feel like, people want to share the wealth it's not like that here it's 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 the norm and nobody has and there are i mean the more money you have the more you, there are privatized services that you can pay for you don't have to go to the you know the public hospital if you want okay. help so you, you have the option private place yeah there's additional insurances that you can purchase and you can go get some a higher quality service so it's i mean classism is an issue everywhere you know mm, yeah. but um for the average person, I think that we're, it's okay. We're okay with it. You know, we're okay with paying the taxes. I'm fine with it. You know? Well, are there any other drawbacks to um, living in Canada? I mean, you said the, maybe the, the length of, that you could possibly see a doctor. I can think of one off the top of my head and that is the winter. <laughs> how do yeah. you guys prepare for the winter? I mean, how cold is cold? So the winter time, when I moved here, subhanallah like legit was like two feet in front of our apartment door and it was like culture shock i was just like what <laughs> am i getting myself into um so uh, the thing is that the word like there's there's no preparation in terms of like men there's a mental preparation but nothing stops right like it's yeah. just like okay here comes the snow yeah. so you'll get like two days ago i went got my uh, my snow tires changed put on my car and uh, we live in an apartment building, but the um, houses, when they have long drive throughs, driveways, they build, um, I guess, a canopy, but like a, just like a, a, a outdoor uh, cover for their driveway so mm -hmm. that their driveway doesn't get filled with snow, right? Mm -hmm. And um, plenty of snow blowers. You just got to make sure you have good, you know, winter boots and a, a good coat and a you know, for me, um, when I moved here, we didn't have a car. We didn't have a car for like three years. Mm -hmm. So now that I have a car, I, the snow don't phase me for nothing. Yeah. I'm like, oh, let me go turn my heat on in my car. <laughs> so how long, do you, how, long, how long do you turn your heat on in your car before you go? So you come out, you, well, turn on, you scrape off the windshield, you run back into the house, you wait how long, like 10 <laughs> minutes? Or? Actually, uh, my husband and I, made the financial we probably have to sacrifice it next year but we made the financial choice to get an apartment that had indoor parking uh -huh. so i thankfully i don't have to worry about oh, okay. doing that every day but when i was working and i was driving my car to work if i would come out and it was snowing it was at least a good 10 minutes 15 wow. minutes where you turn the car on and you just let it run put your heat put your seat warmers on because you can't put your heat on yet and you just spend, you know, 10 minutes cleaning off the car because you got to do the top and the side and da, 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 da. And it was make sure you have some good gloves because your hands are going to get 
frozen through yeah. with all of the snow and the snow is beautiful when it's sm- falling but then after it hits the ground and it's been there for a couple of weeks it just becomes black yeah. messy oh, stuff really? yeah yeah so this is one of the <laughs> concerns of my wife i mean she's really really um dreading the the, the cold winter so but you know, if somebody would told us, you know, in in Qatar that it's gonna get to 120 degrees, we'd be like, oh my God, what would you do in the summer? How could you go outside? And what would you do? And how you're gonna survive in the in this extreme heat? But I think this is the the opposite when it comes to the cold. So I guess people just have to you have to do what you have to do and just keep it moving. I remember in Alaska yeah. when I was in Alaska, I went to play. We had a games there when I was in college, and uh, we used to see all the people at night they would plug their their cars they had the engine plug to keep the the engine the oil and all the liquids from freezing over over the night yeah uh, yeah over here i mean i don't really know about other parts of canada in terms of the winter montreal the east i'll be frank with you y'all gonna get some cold winters Mm -hmm. because east canada gets really cold Mm -hmm. um they get a little bit colder in toronto but we get a lot of in ontario excuse me we get a lot of snow here and the further east you go because you're closer to the water Mm -hmm. so it's an adjustment the only thing i would just say is you know once you learn to accept it that's just the way it is you know you'll just you sit through it and then you know, by April, May, it starts, you start to see the light again. <laughs> and you get a few summers, a few months in the summer that you can, you know, relax and enjoy the heat and, and go out and do activities and things like that. So it's, I, because I probably would end up staying in Canada, I've just accepted the fact that snow is just a part of my life. Part of your life. And I, I you know, unless, you know, inshallah, God, uh, Allah blesses us with a beautiful home that we can go to during the winter uh-huh. in a warm client yeah. <laughs> climate. <Yeah. laughs> so it is, it is what it is. So gloves, gloves, boots, coat, gloves, boots, coat, scarves, gloves, boot coat. Yeah. Yep. Uh, bear skin, bear fur, or <laughs> I do, to be honest with you, I had one of those heavy down coats yeah. and it works for me when I had to commute by foot. But when I got my uh, car, yeah. I have like a semi wool coat and yeah. I, it, it keeps me warm enough that I can just throw it on, run into the store and run out. But the, the boots are a big thing because um, you, there'll be ice mm-hmm. and you'll, I've definitely have busted my butt on some ice more mm-hmm. than once. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then also like, I made the mistake and I bought these like industrial, like thick, like super thick rubber type boots and Uh they were so heavy and I couldn't walk in them. Uh So I have something that's like a hybrid of a boot and a sneaker. Okay. And it's, it's perfect. It's perfect. Excellent. Yeah. And then the other thing you'll notice is this is really great as a Muslim in the wintertime, people take their shoes off at the door because they can't, tra- they don't want to attract the snow in because it'll mess up the floors and stuff like that. Oh. So it's more than norm to go to people's houses when we could. And you'll see people with their shoes off. Uh-huh. And then you have, you know, mud rooms and like, you know, mats at the door to collect your boots and stuff because of the snow. And- wow. Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to the Think Global podcast show. Uh, I'm your host, International Seth. And today we have Zainab, Miss Zainab Kahara on us with us uh, today. And we're talking about her relocation to Canada. Uh, make sure if you like this hat that I have on or any other uh, shirts that we that we have, Think Global products and merchandise, make sure to visit up at azomco.com. You can order your from azomco.com. Also follow us on social media at Azamco Global, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So Zainab, how, how long are you planning to stay in Canada? Um, uh, like I mentioned before, probably, uh, ideally what my vision is to have two homes. I'd mm-hmm. like to have a home here and I'd like to have a home uh, in Atlanta because pretty much my, except with the exception of my dad and my grandma, my whole family's there. Mm-hmm. So, um, just being able to go back and forth would be great uh, throughout the year. And then also, you know, inshallah, when we have children, I would like my children to be able to have uh, a second home that they can go to. So I think in terms of within Canada, I definitely will be getting out of Quebec because it's just not my cup of tea. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Um, it's really not that much the language as it is the 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 just some of the cultural norms. I I I, I guess this is not all for all Quebecers, so I don't want to make generalization. But at least from a political standpoint, there's a really big um, denial of like systemic racism, mm -hmm. and and you know you're very inclined to see something happen and then the first thing the leaders will say is that's not an issue we have here we don't struggle we don't have issues with systemic racism and i'm like yo yes you do so, <laughs> yes you do okay so let's try to unpack this now so is it diverse in in quebec or yeah it yeah. well so i'm in montreal right so montreal is the most it's the uh have biggest populated city i think there's like over uh a million and a half, maybe two million people. My math may be wrong, but I know it's a, min a minimum of like a million people. And then I think Quebec City is the other biggest city, right, okay. in population. So when you go into Montreal proper, like it's extremely diverse. Mm -hmm. I have to say my my um, view of diversity is different because I came from Atlanta, mm -hmm. which is like tremendous. It's a black city. Shout know? out to the ATL. Yeah, so it was like people were like, "It's so diverse here," and I'm like, "Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> go ahead and tell yourself that." Yeah. But there, it is there are in terms of social cultural interactions. Yes, in Montreal itself, there is a, a very open, progressive um, uh, community. A lot of Muslims, a lot of Muslims, mm -hmm. but from a political leadership standpoint it's like being in georgia where atlanta is a liberal city and then georgia is a conservative well we'll see yeah. georgia is a conservative state right it's kind of the same here so i i've just never really felt like comfortable mm. you know i just haven't and the people are nice here for the most part but then you'd still have people who I, you know, I, I, I wonder like if people looking me differently because I'm a black woman mm -hmm. and I was spoiled. I was so spoiled in Atlanta. It wasn't something I really thought, depending on the neighborhood I was in, mm -hmm. for the most part, that just wasn't something that I needed to think about, you know? Yeah. So I, ideally we'll probably head over into Ontario, move okay. further west. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to do Toronto because it's expensive. It's a very uh, expensive, Maybe a, yeah. a surrounding city, yeah. So when you say systematic racism, is that provincially or is that just the, the country as a whole? Because when you look at Canada, we do feel that's very, well, progressive. Um, mm -hmm. But it is, there, you do still see a lot of inc incidents that are surfacing on the internet with the police and you know, also like yeah. blatant racism and stuff like that. So uh, do you think that it is something that is in um, Quebec, you know, or... Uh, do you think overall, like they still have a problem because Canada is obviously different than the U S because it didn't have like this slave, you know, slavery right. per se, but they did have this whole kind of thing with the indigenous people. And then they had yes. migration and they had the French and uh, British Br Britain war and all that stuff. So there is a lot to unpack, but, um, could you just touch yeah, upon that? And yeah. that's the yeah, you, I'm glad you brought up the history with the, the indigenous um, people because that is probably Canada's biggest stain and it and it trickled down into, you know, the last 50 years where you had um, um, schooling, they called it, uh, I forgot what the term was, was when they were sending children off to these schools and they were pretty much desensitizing them and, 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 and abusing them, right, to strip them of their identity of their indigenous identity. Mm -hmm. And so even as recent as last month, there was a woman who videotaped herself in a hospital and sh the doctors, the nurses were talking to her horribly, just, this is your fall. All you're good for is, you know, laying on your back and having kids. And she ended up dying. Mm. And everybody was like, you know, screaming, like, this is an issue, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, the premier of the province, the first thing he said was like, you know, well, I don't think it was an issue of racism. Mm. And I was just like, what? why do we need to come to that conclusion first? Why don't we just, just, why don't we investigate and, you know, look into that, you know? So that's the mentality I think that you encounter. When I moved here, when they were in the middle of a, an election, this is when Trudeau was elected mm -hmm. and Harper, who was the, uh, I think the incumbent, yeah, he really was trying to push this fear focused platform and they 
made the face veil a big issue, like mm -hmm. the niqab and, and Quebec was one of the places where people voted that they didn't think that the women should be able to wear the niqab, mm -hmm. which is so ironic, subhanAllah, because everybody walking around looking right. like Muslims, but yeah. I digress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I digress. So it's look, I, I know that there is no perfect situation. Mm -hmm. You know, people look at the United States and they just think that it is just a, you know, a hot mess express. Mm -hmm. And it is, but there are so many countries in the world that dealt with nationalism, are dealing mm -hmm. with nationalism movements, are dealing with um, uh, issues with systemic, the, 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 the acknowledgement and the push to end systemic racism, mm -hmm. you know, so it's not anything that's genuinely unique here, which is mm -hmm. why I feel like I would be okay living here. And I would be okay in the States too. You know, Allah's yeah. in control of everything. That's right. Amen. So, I mean, I think this will be a good segue because we touched upon the U.S. and we touched upon Canada's election. Um, mm -hmm. You know, growing up in, the, in, in America and now living outside allows you to you and I both have a really unique vantage point to look back at the U.S. and kind of analyze things from abroad to see what's going on mm -hmm. there. Um, what are you, what, what's your, what's your, what's your opinion? I mean, what do you, what do you, what do you think? Like what's, what's going on? I see what's, what's happened in, um, in Philly, um, what, two, two yeah. or three days ago, obviously you have a, a gentleman with obviously mental health issues and the police, um, you know, pumped up a whole bunch of bullets in him. He, he was holding a knife, but, you know, I'm, I'm sure between two law enforcement officers that they could handle that situation differently. I mean, you have tasers, um, you know, you have situations where you, you're trained, you, your training should kick in. The training should not be pump the guy full of 15 bullets or something like that. That should not be, uh, you know, yeah. hit him with a taser, put him down. You have two work yeah. together as a team, wait, call for backup, keep on backing up. You know, it has to be, have more value for life, but everything now what's going on with the, the income inequality, the social unrest, the riots, and now this is all on the, the, the precipice on a, you know, unprecedented election between uh, Trump oh, and yeah. Biden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, honestly, uh, the first thing that I think about when I think of what's going on in the US is, it's just a, a, a reflection of the spiritual warfare that human humanity is in right now, mm -hmm. right? And uh, when I moved here, I, you know, Allah blessed me with the opportunity to really study the, 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 the stories of the prophets, right? All of them and what they experienced. And believe it or not, this, what we are seeing now is not the first time it has occurred in humanity, mm -hmm. right? Um, chaos and confusion, mm -hmm. right? Um, if we go as far to, to uh, these are not prophets, but well, the sons of prophet Adam, you know, Cain and Abel, one brother killing another, right? Mm -hmm. Believing that jealousy and envy and the shaitan just wreaking havoc. Mm -hmm. And so I, 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 I'm present of what's going on. I am able to engage and have conversations, but I really create a limitation to it because at the end of the day, I know that, uh, I believe that Allah is, uh, you know, the most merciful and he would not allow us to continuously be in a state of suffering mm -hmm. without any relief, even if it may not be on this physical earth, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that a lot of times it's easy for us to kind of get caught up in everything that we're viewing externally. And um, we become hopeless and we become scared. And that's when the shaitan gets real busy. He's like, yeah, you got, that's my recipe for disaster. I got you now. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to protect ourselves, you know, if 2020 taught us anything, we have to protect ourselves spiritually, you know, mm -hmm. and we can't, um, the shaitan keeps throwing things at us to make us feel like there isn't any hope, but I, I believe in the, in the greatest God. And I, I believe that there's something better for, for all of us, you know, educate yourself, you know, don't be a silent advocate, don't be a silent bystander, excuse me advocate for others, you know, as the Prophet Salahu was solemn did, as Prophet Isa did, you know, mm -hmm. Prophet Musa, but also don't allow yourself to get so caught up 
in the foolishness that you get led astray. Yeah, I mean, you know, and that's just really my thought about the whole everything we've been seeing, you know. Yeah, yeah I mean, I mean. Well, say up. Yeah, well, I think we'll leave it there. I mean, that was very uh, insightful. No, I mean that's deep stuff, and uh, it's 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 a it's a message of hope because you know we are only human, and we can only control so much. And there is a higher power, there is a supreme being, and uh, yes, we kind of just have to let this run its course. I mean, I think what you said hits it spot on. You have to protect yourself spiritually because if you don't have you know your your faith correct can have all the money in the world you can have you know the biggest house and you know all this but if you don't have a strong faith then things like this will make your make your life unbalanced and uh, that's right not not meaningful you know and uh right, I think right. put here um to have meaning in this life and meaning um, yeah right it's meaning it means meaning and also is. just i'm sorry i was just gonna say also i i think that um you know uh People say all the time, God is love, and, and, and it's true, God is love, but God always wants us to lead, move uh, through through love and affection of each other, right? That's one of our purposes as servants of the creator is to love and nurture and support each other, you know? So that, and that's what's just really what it's about. It's loving each other as servants, serving God through loving others, you know? I mean, I mean. Well, I love you for the sake of God, it's my sister, and I'm glad to see that you're doing well. I'm glad you see you're doing well. Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe we can have you come back on the sh on the show another time in the near future. Um, until yes. then, any, any more shout outs that you want to do? Uh, the only other thing is uh, uh, on my Instagram, ZK Careers, um, you'll see some links to my podcast that I have with my sister. It's called um, Kahara Conversations with my baby sister, who is not a baby. She's 25. <laughs> Can you, you believe it? Birthday recently or? Um, no, Mimi's birthday was in July. She turned 25 in July. So, wow. um, and she's so smart. I Man, just she, sit in awe. She is brilliant. Such a brilliant sister. Yes. Uh, yeah. Very brilliant. So like, we have, um, we just talk about, uh, uh, just give advice on life advice, um, spiritual advice. And then we connect it to your career, uh, whether you're an entrepreneur or you're just trying to navigate you know, your industry. Um, it's a really great um, uh, podcast and I invite you to come listen to us. Absolutely. The hear it is there right. first here on the Think Global show, ladies and gentlemen. My guest today was Miss Zainab Kahira and I uh, hope you had a really, really good understanding of how, how her journey was to relocation to Canada and beyond. Make sure you to visit azomco.com and follow us on social media, Azomco Global, and make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get notifications straight to you with our latest podcast shows. Thank you, uh, Zainab, and uh, see you soon. Thank you, Yusuf. Thank you. All right. Ciao. Ciao.